HCAM programming is supported by viewers like you and by Star Realty, a real estate brokerage firm specializing in residential real estate sales in and around Hopkinton. Their agents live in town, send their children to Hopkinton schools, serve on local boards, volunteer for local causes, and frequent local business. Hopkinton is where they live, work, and give back. Star Realty. Coming up in tonight's broadcast, a visit to Lake Whitehall, the HCA's newest fundraiser, and Model UN, now planned for students at the middle school. All this and more brought to you by Hopkinton's television station, HCAM TV. I'm Michelle Murdoch, and HCAM News starts right now. Hello, Hopkinton, and welcome to HCAM News for the week of July 22nd. Foxwood, Massachusetts continues its series of public presentations outlining the impacts of the proposed Milford Casino. This week's meeting on Wednesday, July 24th, begins at 7 p.m. in the Milford High School Auditorium located at 31 West Fountain Street in Milford. The presentation will focus on the social and economic impacts of the casino. A final meeting on July 31st, also at Milford High, will present environmental and design matters. All meetings are open to the public and any questions or inquiries from Hopkinton residents should be directed to Selectman Brian Herr, Chairman of the Metro West Anti-Casino Coalition. Project Just Because will hold its second annual Christmas in July fundraiser and silent auction this Thursday, July 25th from 7 to 10 p.m. at their headquarters on South Street. With 90% of donations coming in November and December, the event is an effort to increase donations throughout the summer and other months to provide funding that is needed now. In addition to hors d'oeuvres, beer and wine, entertainment and a visit from Santa, there will also be a silent and live auction with items such as a signed Gronk game jersey, a week in a Gunkwit, Maine, Red Sox tickets and various gift certificates. Tickets are $35 per person in advance or $40 at the door. Stop by, call or email the Project Just Because office for tickets. The children's room at the library is in full swing for the summer season with several events taking place last week, all with a dinosaur theme. As part of the library's Dig Into Reading theme, the library is hosting several related children's programs throughout the summer. Last Monday, children had the opportunity to uncover information about mammals that live underground. The program, hosted by Hands on Nature, allow the children at the program to explore the characteristics of underground creatures through story, discussion, a craft, and by actually getting to meet a rabbit, an underground mammal. So what I think is cool is that as we're just walking around on top of the earth and on top of the grass and everything, there's this whole world underneath our feet that everything is living and digging and um, a whole bunch is going on there that we don't know about. So I love to learn about these animals because it's so cool to see all that goes on. We thought it transitioned nicely into a library program because especially the summer reading theme being um, dig into reading this year, so it was a nice match. Animals can live in different places. Where are some other places animals can live? Do you guys have any ideas? Yeah? Underwater? Yeah, absolutely underwater. Excellent, yes. And yeah? In trees. In trees, so they can live underground in trees and the water, yeah? Um, in the sky. Yeah. Some things like Exactly. Some shoes just spent all day in the sky. Um, yeah? In a cave. Yeah, in a cave. That would be cool. It was a fun bunch of kids, and they, I loved how they were also interested and had so many great questions. And then on Thursday, the crafts and stories continued with Youth Services Librarian Denise Coffrin, who read a few gardening-related stories, including one about flowers and potatoes. Spring has arrived. Zinnia is getting some garden ready for planting. She digs up the soil and she turns it over with her shovel. She takes one of the stones, she 
<clears throat> takes out stones and rakes the dirt smooth. The warm sun feels good as she works. Warm sun doesn't feel so good today, does it? We shovel compost onto each hill. Wait, won't that smother the plants? No, said Dad, they'll grow through it. Are we really going to get new potatoes of old potatoes? I think so, said Dad. After story time, the children had the opportunity to create their own garden by decorating their own pot and then planting kale seeds with the help of Garden Club member Helena Garrache. Let's take a few seeds, just put them in, and then cover the hole over. That's lovely. I just thought this would be a kind of fun thing for the kids to do, decorate their pots and uh, plant a seed, and hopefully they will grow and it will teach them about um, maybe doing gardening and maybe inspire them. I think it was really fun because I do it at home a lot. For a full list of summer library activities, visit HopkintonLibrary.org. With this library update, I'm Stephanie Kane. The fun continues this week on Tuesday, July 23rd at 10.30 a.m. with the Caravan Puppets. On Friday, July 26th, from 2 to 4 p.m., stop by and make an ant during drop-in craft. For questions or more information about any library events, visit the library website for more details. Next up tonight, the HCAM News camera makes a quick trip to Lake Whitehall. The 525-acre lake located in Whitehall State Park, an area of Hoppington that personifies rural character. In 1894, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts created Whitehall State Park, also known as Lake Whitehall and Whitehall Reservoir, by taking the land to create a new public reservoir. No longer used as a source of drinking water, the 920-acre Whitehall State Park surrounds and includes the 575 acres that make up Lake Whitehall. The park is owned and managed by the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation and offers boating, fishing, and hiking trails, but there are no beaches or camping areas. The main trail around the lake is approximately six miles long and winds its way through the woods, offering frequent views of the lake along the way. Canoes, kayaks, and small power boats are allowed, and watercraft speed is limited to 12 miles per hour. There is a boat launch with parking at the north end of the lake, off Route 135, and according to the Friends of Whitehall website, the best place to start a hike on the south end of the lake is near the bridge where Pond Street crosses over the southernmost tip of the lake. The trail is marked by blue triangle blazes. This is actually my favorite spot on the lake and the one where you can often see people fishing or putting their canoes into the water. Once out on the water, one of the more interesting things to see is the beaver dam shown here from a canoe. Also on the north side of the lake is the Whitehall Dam, yet another great spot for scenic photos or fishing. So if you live in Hopkinton but have yet to explore the wonders of Whitehall State Park, this summer might be just the time to do it. Work is ongoing at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts as the second phase of renovations continue. To help fund the changes, the HCA hopes to paint the town with their latest fundraiser, which kicked off last week. Phase two of the Hopkinton Center for the Arts expansion project is now underway. This phase will renovate the 6,200 square foot barn into a multi-use learning space with an additional wing for performances, exhibits, and more. In May, reframing, Residing and re-roofing of the barn began, and as the work continues, classroom studios, rehearsal space, an exhibit hall, and a community meeting room are finally becoming a reality. One exciting development during the renovation process is the ability to use the second floor. The best news that we didn't uh, realize was going to be a possibility is we've been able to use the second floor. So the entire second floor will be classrooms as well. So we're thrilled about that. The project is a joint undertaking by the Hopkinton Center for the Arts and the Hopkinton Community Endowment with a shared goal of creating a regional arts facility for art, dance, theater, film, and more. For those involved with the project, the excitement surrounding the recent progress feels good. I can't even explain how it feels. It's so wonderful. I mean, it's 
it, the energy that has uh, come from this project and the support from the community has really been overwhelmingly positive for some time now. So um, it's not surprising at all to us who've been here, but it's just been so wonderful to see uh, and have so many people come up to us and, and talk about their excitement and uh, all the possibilities that are going to happen in the center. So it's great. Currently, the estimated cost of phase two of the project is approximately $1,500,000, and the total cost of the campaign is currently being revised as final construction costs are determined. To date, just over $1 million have been raised, and the fundraising continues this summer with the Paint the Town campaign. Paint the Town runs July 15th through September 15th, and all funds raised will benefit the capital campaign in partnership with the Hopkinton Community Endowment. Any and all donations, no matter the amount, will result in a colorful ribbon and bow being placed on your mailbox to indicate that you are a supporter of the project and the arts. We have a, a new fundraising campaign uh, underway called Paint the Town, and we're uh, inviting anyone, everyone, to send in a donation for the construction uh, of the Art Center. And we'll come along with one of these little colorful bowls on your uh, mailbox. And the idea behind it is really just to spread the word a little um, fun thing, splash of color throughout the town for awareness of what we're doing. Donations for the Paint the Town campaign can be made online from the HCA website, or you may also donate directly to the campaign via the HCE website. A public hearing for the next phase of construction, an 8,000 square foot addition to the renovated barn for performance and TV studio space is on the planning board's agenda for Monday, July 22nd. And now, for a look at what's playing on HCAM this week, it's Courtney Taylor with the latest HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider News segment. On Monday, July 22nd at 7 p.m., community members take a turn at the podium to share their original poetry, stories, and songs or to share words inspiring to them during this open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Mouse, Dr. Head, I love you, she said softly. I want you for my queen. Thank you, said Rose. And in return for your love, I will make a safe place for you to hide from your enemies. As she spoke, all of her stems sprouted thorns that pointed in all directions, up and down and all over, until only a tiny mouse could climb between them. At her roots was a place where mouse could hide and be safe from fox and cat and owl and anyone else who would wish her harm. On Thursday, July 25th at 7.30 p.m., enjoy some new rock sounds during the latest Concerts on the Common performance. During an all-new Meet Your Neighbor on Friday, July 25th at 9 p.m., 8th grade teacher and girls soccer coach Evren Gundes talks about his childhood and how it influences him today. Graduated with a very small class, not, not anything like what they have in Hopkinton here, but I graduated with 68 kids in my high school class and it was a very tight-knit community. I think we have one stoplight and uh, I think there, there might be a little uh, convenience store and a gas station and that's about it in Hopedale but mm -hmm. grew up in, with a lot of good friends and we all played soccer growing up and mm -hmm. it was a, I was born and raised in that town. Mm -hmm. Never had to move and those are where my roots really started. All of our regular HCAM programming replays throughout the week so visit www hcam.tv slash schedule for additional program dates and times. During the latest edition of Dive In Drive In on Saturday, July 27th at 8 p.m., a man named Ben tries to protect six people trapped in a Pennsylvania farmhouse during a zombie attack in Night of the Living Dead. HCAM's Mike Prate and Mike Tarosian share some trivia about this horror film classic. With a cast of unknowns and no real star power, you wonder how it got made at all. The film was made for $114,000 and grossed over $30 million worldwide. It also was the first time the hero was an African-American in horror films. 
On Sunday, June 30th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from July 22nd will air. All throughout the week on HKM Ed, the noteworthy outreach concert at Elmwood School will air. For program dates and times, visit www.hkim.tv slash education. To have the HKIM Insider Newsletter delivered to you automatically, you just have to sign up for it. If you already receive it, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HKIM. Now back to more HKIM News. We're going to take a short break next and we'll be right back with plans for bringing a model UN club to the middle school for the fall. Hi, I'm Cheryl Peralt, host of the program Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. This show introduces you to Hopkinton residents, the many interesting people who are our neighbors and we invite them to share stories, experiences, insights and observations from their lives. We'd like to hear who you think should be interviewed on our program. So if you know someone that Hopkinton should get to know more about, please email me and stay tuned for more episodes of Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. Students at Hopkinton High already participate in Model UN, a club that simulates activities of the United Nations, but middle school teacher Julie Feeney hopes to offer middle school students the chance to get involved when school begins in the fall. If any other country had moved in such an unprovoked, destructive manner as the United States has done, they would be instantly trade sanctions will be instantly imposed upon them. And I move that the United States, no matter how economically powerful, is no different. It is our responsibility as an international body to condemn them. Starting this fall, middle school students will also be able to put their debate skills to the test, just like their high school counterparts, with the formation of the Model United Nations Club at the middle school level. The after-school club is designed to be a simulation of the UN, where participants research and debate various current event topics. Although there are around 2,000 schools across Massachusetts that have Model UN programs, there are only a few that are currently in middle schools. It is kind of unique because most Model UN starts at the high school. Um, so it's a very good opportunity that not a lot of middle school students get to have. A lot of kids come into high school not really knowing what Model UN is. I know I certainly have never heard of it before. And to have that early on kind of sets them up to be able to join it now and be really good at it, no parliamentary procedure, know what it is from the outset. So I think it's a great idea. And I think it will really help all the kids like us who love politics and to, who love to debate at a young age, get ready to come into the club. I was interested in politics before I joined Model UN, but I just had beliefs and I didn't really have evidence to support those beliefs. Model UN is really an opportunity to bring together um, all different types of learning and also to have a club that is, for, uh, is focused on um, furthering academic interests. So it's a really good opportunity to have a type of conversation um, that you start in class but you don't get to continue it as much as you would like. This is kind of the opportunity to have that type of um, discussion focused on international issues. Although specific details haven't been worked out yet, there have been discussions for high school students involved in Model UN to work directly with those participating in the middle school. A lot of the high school students said that they wish they had done uh, Model UN starting in the middle school, so they're very excited for the opportunity that the middle school students have. So I know that um, we should be expecting high school guests <laughs> and that they um, are going to be great and supportive of what we do. The club meets once a week at the high school and will most likely follow that same format too at the middle school. During these meetings, students practice their public speaking and discussion skills by having debates about either real current issues or sometimes funny made up ones by taking on a specific role such as a particular country or person in the debate. Aliens had invaded and <laughs> all these people um, from the past, from the future, I was John Smith, the American colonist, and we had to discuss our opinions on how to get rid of aliens and it was so much fun and it's just a great memorable experience. Everybody has a chance to speak, share their opinion and respectfully present their argument. The United States would just like to say that although its actions may seem rash, so does the invasion by Canada and Mexico. The United States has been supporting both these countries as a trade partner for several years, several decades now, and 
was quite shocked by their decision to invade. The country of Japan offers its condolences to Canada and Mexico for its grievous losses and questions the reasoning of the United States in dropping the atomic bomb, considering the fact that Japan has been bombed twice in the past. We'll offer you not being nuked. Hey, they're giving me protection. If they decide to have it. They're one country, pretty much everyone else. Yo, you're surrounded by the purpose of these debates is to help prepare students for a handful of conferences that they attend throughout the school year, in which students get a chance to debate against other schools from across the globe in a format akin to how the United Nations actually operates. There are conferences specific to students both at the middle and high school level. I was in a conference my sophomore year at St. John's Prep and the topic was internet censorship and I was the Solomon Islands and the Solomon Islands doesn't have much internet and we're a very small nation. My chairs that chaired the committee didn't even know that the Solomon Islands existed, so I was set up to not be able to do very much. But I expanded beyond that. I did a lot of research and I gathered information about the Solomon Islands and formed my own opinions based on what I had researched and I ended up being a really major player in discussion and my ideas got passed on the resolution and I made a lot of something that started really small. At UMass this spring was the Dalai Lama in a committee for Tibetan independence and it was very cool being the leader of a spiritual movement um, and trying to negotiate with the Chinese and other world powers on gaining independence for Tibet. Through these exercises, students develop their public speaking, research, and debate skills. However, particularly at the middle school, those who are apprehensive about public speaking are still encouraged to participate in the club. There's still a lot to learn and there's lots of ways that you can help um, support members of the club who are more comfortable with speaking. So we need everybody. Ultimately, the goal of Model UN isn't just about education and debate, but about having fun while doing so. It's fun to meet people from other schools and talk about things that you really care about and kind of um, to pretend that you're a diplomat. It's, um, it's really a good time. Really what it's all about is sharing your knowledge, sharing your enjoyment of the world and learning about how it works and that's a really great thing when you embrace it. So have fun. If you're doing Model UN, you should like doing Model UN. For our final story this week, we're going to play the ESPN video of Rick and Dick Hoyt at this year's ESPY Awards, where Team Hoyt was awarded the Jimmy V Perseverance Award. Congratulations, Dick and Rick. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hoyts. I want to thank all of you for giving such a warm welcome to a couple of stubborn Boston guys. <laughs> we want to put you at our best foot forward, so I'm going to let my son, the college grad, talk first. I am so excited to be here in L.A. to receive the Jimmy V. Perseverance Award. I can hardly believe we are here. 37 years ago, nobody would even talk to us, but because my dad said yes, when I asked him to push me in the first race, and my family, especially my brothers Rob and Russ, have always stood by us and helped us persevere, even with so many people telling us that we did not belong we are here it only proves the wisdom of jimmy v's words don't give up don't ever give up and as you might imagine we are even more thrilled because the life motto of team hoyt which has inspired thousands of people around the world to better 
themselves through athletics and to not tolerate people with disabilities being denied the opportunity to participate in life is yes, you can. Rick is my ins inspiration. He has taught me great many things over the years, and every day I consider myself lucky to be his father and teammate. I don't think you could find two guys more proud to represent the city of Boston. Next time you see someone in a wheelchair or who can't talk or walk, or they may talk or walk a little bit different, they are people too, and deserve to be able to live, learn, work, and play. Rick and I want to thank you all. And that wraps up this week's edition of HCAM News, keeping Hoppington up to date with the latest local happenings. I'm Michelle Murdoch, and for the HCAM News team, that's your news, Hopkinton.